In this video, we're going to take a look at the Edge Router Lite here at Homeowner Geek, at the configuration and software that runs on it. This will give you an idea of what a, a more advanced router can look like. So we've signed in to the router, and as you can see, we're started or prompted, uh, or we begin, at the dashboard. And here at the dashboard, it gives you know, a quick overview of what's going on. So how many routes are configured, uh, how many rules are set up on the firewall and the NAT, and DHCP. So this is a great place to look quickly at what's going on. We even get a visual here at the top that the front of the router has three Ethernet ports on it. And you can see in my case, I have two of them that are configured. So the first one on the left, port ETH0, is the one that's connected to my cable modem. So that goes to the internet. And then the second port, this ETH1, goes to my currently one and only one Ethernet uh, subnet or network. Uh, I could have a separate network if I wanted to. At the moment, I don't. Um, but it's kind of a neat feature of the router that you can have separate physical networks if you want to. Uh, on the dashboard, there are some you know, quick overviews about data that flows uh, in and out of the network. So you can get a pretty nice visual of what's going on. So let's um, move on and see what some of the other buttons allow us to do. So on the traffic analysis tab, this is where we can actually do some more detailed analysis about data. I don't actually have deep packet inspection turned on at the moment. So uh, if I did and I had it enabled, I'd be able to see more of the traffic that's going on. Uh, I don't at the moment. I had turned it off when I reconfigured. So not a lot to see here. If we move on to the routing tab, you'll see this is where we can actually set up our routes. So this is how we get from our internal network out to the external network and back. Uh, very flexible. You can add routes uh, at your comfort level. So if you wanted to set up multiple networks, uh, virtual ones or physical ones within your home or office, you can do that and then choose how data gets routed between them. So you could easily create a guest network and allow only you know, certain access to that network, but not to your regular network. A little more advanced feature here, but it is an opportunity for those that uh, want to play around with routes. Firewall, which is obviously a key feature of this device, protects data on the inside of our network uh, and allows it to get out, but doesn't allow unsolicited network to come in. Uh, this is where we set up forwarding of ports, policies of the firewall, so you can see the WAN in uh, policy here. We can set network address translation, so this is where we enable our clients on the internal network to be able to get access to IP addresses, and then we can set up firewall groups. So a lot of this is advanced. I don't have most of it configured, but for those of you that know routers and want to set up advanced features, that is certainly an option in the software, which is pretty amazing for a device that costs less than $100. On the services tab, uh, we can add, you can see a DHCP server of which I have one configured. So if we take a look at that, we can see that, you know, I've got a pool size of 207 addresses. So in theory, I could have 207 devices uh, all getting dynamically assigned IP addresses. I've got 28 that are leased, which is pretty amazing given that it's inside my house. Um, and you can see I have four static, which is kind of cool. So I've got a video camera, uh, that's got a static address, my voice over IP device, and a couple of printers with static addresses. So every time they turn on, they get assigned the same address, which makes it easy for them to access, or easy for me to access them to do administration. So again, you know, fairly basic features, uh, but nice that you can set up, you know, this kind of flexibility on the router. Uh, for those of you that want to access your network from outside, you've got VPN options. So both point-to-point -point tunneling protocol and IPsec options are available. Uh, quality of service. This is a, a handy feature in my house. Uh, I don't have it set up because I just rebuilt this router. Uh, but what you can do is grant priority to certain types of traffic. So in my case, I want uh, my voice over IP traffic to have a higher priority than Netflix traffic. When my four kids are all home watching Netflix, I still want to be able to make phone calls. So I can set up QoS rules to allow my traffic to have priority over theirs. I can set up additional users if I want to, to configure the system. Uh, this config tree is pretty handy. So you can see we've been looking at the graphical interface. 
There's also a command line interface. So if you're a hardcore router person and you want to go into the operating system and set rules from the command line, you can do that. But this config tree tab is kind of a hybrid between the two. You can look at each one of the interface options and you can go drill down into it and then you can go make changes to the individual uh, component or group name. Um, so this is all things that you can do from the command line interface, but for those of us that don't think in command line, it's kind of a nice way to say, hey, I want to set up some VPN rules, and then I can drill down into the specific rule, and then I can set up, you know, hit the plus key, and go down and actually set rules up that way. And then the, the nicest feature for people that are new, if you're a little overwhelmed by what you've seen so far, are these wizards. So when you first set up the router, if you don't really know what you're doing, that's okay. You can choose one of these wizards and it will set all of the basic settings for you. So you just answer a couple of questions, how you're connected to the internet and what you want to configure within your local network. And then when you hit apply, it, it automatically configures all of those settings for you. So you don't have to be knowledgeable about routers at all to make this work. So that's been a brief overview of the Edge Router Lite operating system software. Hope you found it useful. Thanks for joining and we'll see you next time.